A new documentary, Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, is a docuseries that uncovers the toxic culture behind some of the most iconic children's shows of the late 1990s and early 2000s, with Drake and Josh star Drake Bell set to explain how he was abused by a well-known dialogue coach at Nickelodeon, as other child actors have come out and warned of how they were abused and no one did anything to stop it. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about a very difficult subject to talk about, specifically children being taken advantage of and the recent revelations that have come out regarding some of the workers there at Nickelodeon and the things that they were doing and even drugging some of the young actors. But before we get into that, make sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel as well as like this video. And if you're listening via podcast, make sure to leave a five star review if you feel so led and that just helps these messages to get out there not only warning about what is going on but also making sure everyone knows that there is forgiveness found in jesus christ but as we were saying this show this docuseries that is coming out is going to detail some of the terrible things that some of these child actors have gone through and i think if you really look at so much of the child actors, whether it's the Demi Lovato's or the Miley Cyrus's or the Britney Spears or the Jamie Lynn Spears, I mean, you could really just go down the line here and you see just a, a sad display of what they are after being involved uh, for such a long time as children stars. And this preview we're going to be showing you here for quiet on set is one that is surprising a lot of people because it's almost like, hey, finally, someone's actually going to say something and also name some names. To hear that Brian Peck was a sexual predator, it made me wonder immediately about who was being hurt. Who it is, when it happened, where it happened. I have no idea. It wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. The docuseries has been slowly uh, putting out different ads and so forth about it coming out and will come out March 17th. And a lot of people were wondering if there were going to be big stars that were going to be showing, hey, this is what happened to me. And Drake Bell seems to be the one that everyone's going, wow, who knew that he would be the one that would come out with this, especially considering that Bell's revelation comes three years after he pleaded guilty to child endangerment charges after he was accused of sexual contact and grooming an underage fan. The victim spoke at length in court about the damage Bell has done to her life, saying he began grooming her when she was only 12 years old. And this is sad for a number of reasons, because it does seem that hurt people a lot of times do hurt people. And when it comes to sin, sin, along, uh, sin a lot of times begets more sin. And there is an effect that people can have. And sadly enough, when people are affected this way, a lot of times they do affect others. And it is really heartbreaking. And this doesn't excuse any of the behavior that Drake Bell has has done, any of it whatsoever. But it does just show you the reality of how sin can affect someone. And now, sadly enough, a lot of times people can perpetuate the very sin that was affecting them mightily. And it's a heartbreaking thing. And the the guy here that is specifically, and a lot of people are going to be bringing up Dan Snyder here, but the person who was actually arrested in 2004 is a man by the name of Brian Peck. And Brian Peck 
is somebody that worked on a number of shows and a number of movies. And what's interesting to me is the fact that Brian Peck, who apparently was involved in drugging, uh, was involved in, I can't even read these things out loud. One, because uh, they would stop allowing our show to be watched by anybody. But number two, it, it's just disgusting to try to get through and even read some of the filings and the court filings that have happened. But Brian Peck was a dialogue coach there at Nickelodeon. And in 2004, he was arrested for two different felonies, both involving a minor, one being copulation and the other being lewd and lascivious acts. And he was sentenced to 16 months in prison and was registered as a sex offender in California. But here's the really interesting thing. After he was caught for this, after he was arrested for this, after that, Disney hired him to work on the sweet life of Zack and Cody. I mean, how how do you do something like that? Honestly, and it's disgusting. And this guy has made a ton of money and a ton of movies and has done these sorts of acts, but it's interesting because Brian Peck is actually someone who has worked on shows like The Amanda Show, X-Men, X-Men 2, Return of the Living Dead, Love Wrecked, Holes, Good Burger, and The Willies. And what's interesting is he frequently collaborated not only with Dan Snyder, but Brian Singer. And we actually have an entire video just covering Brian Singer and some of his disgusting behavior. X-Men director Brian Singer allegedly met his accuser Michael Egan, then 15, in 1998 at a mansion in Encino, California. Tragically, that was a site of regular drug-fueled underage sex attacks and pedophilia. Michael Egan, who was 15 years old at the time, sued X-Men director and writer Brian Singer for allegedly raping and molesting him. Egan describes a network of Hollywood homosexuals engaged in pedophilia. He stated that X-Men director Brian Singer claimed that these gay men run Hollywood had me over to the house um, of where these perpetrators in this ring kind of uh, basically started. They'd pull me away for their uh, threat sessions and um, tell me they have gaydar, they have this. At the end of the day, if you don't keep the members of this group happy, we control Hollywood, um, we can eliminate you, we will eliminate you. Um, threat after threat after threat. At the house it was I mean, I've had drugs um, put in drinks. I had liquor poured down my throat um, from being um, where there were rules in the house of no swimsuits, no clothes out by the pool area. I was raped numerous times in that house by numerous individuals. Um, various types of sexual abuse all throughout that house. Um, it was just something they, that you were like a piece of meat to these people. And they, they just, they'd pass you around between them. It was, if, if I could define what that house was, it's evil. According to court records, X-Men director and writer Brian Singer, quote, flagrantly disregarded plaintiff's unwillingness to submit and forced plaintiff's head underwater to make plaintiff perform oral sex upon him. When plaintiff pulled his head out of the water in order to breathe, defendant Singer demanded that he continue, which plaintiff refused. The suit went on, quote, defendant Singer then forced plaintiff to continue performing oral sex upon him outside the pool and subsequently forcibly sodomized plaintiff, end quote. Incredibly, just days before the Singer suit was to go to court, famous child actor Corey Feldman talked to Nightline about how he and other child actors were raped by Hollywood elite and that many of those who are running Hollywood are in fact pedophiles and the dirtiest secret is pedophilia. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh yeah, not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded. Literally. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted and what they were about and the types of people that were surrounding me till I went, oh, my God, they were everywhere like vultures. Vultures, who Feldman says abused him and his best friend, the late child actor Corey Haim, his co-star in The Lost Boys. Well, what happens if my mom is dating the head vampire? 
Feldman says the trauma of that pedophilia contributed to Haim's death. There's one person to blame in the death of Corey Haim, and that person happens to be a Hollywood mogul. And that person needs to be exposed, but unfortunately I can't be the one to do it. But the person that knows who did it and knows who he is, is watching right now, I guarantee you. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. There was a circle of older men that surrounded themselves around this group of kids. Hmm. And they all had either their own power or connections to great power in the entertainment industry. Now, I'm going to be bringing Pastor Joe on later to talk a little bit more on an update uh, where Brian Singer is at from those allegations and the allegations that are coming out here. But it does seem like these birds of a feather are flocking together very, very clearly. But that's not the only one. It seems like Nickelodeon had a huge problem with a number of these behaviors and some of the parents being involved. In fact, Jeanette McCurdy from the show iCarly, she actually said that until she was 17 years old, her mother performed vaginal and breast exams on her. And she said that she refused to appear in the revival of iCarly because of the reminder of her mother's abuse during the show. So bad that she actually wrote a 2022 memoir titled, quote, I'm glad my mom died. And the cover actually features McCurdy looking up and holding a pink urn with confetti spilling out as she describes her mother's abusive and controlling influence. And and that really does describe so much of this, uh, so much of these childhood actors and childhood stars, the parents either being completely negligent or actually being the ones who are the abusers. And it is a heartbreaking thing, but it is a reality. And Disney and Nickelodeon, it's interesting. Of course, we we have people being abused there. And they continue to perpetuate, whether it's same-sex sex relationships or, you know, other forms of sexual promiscuity and so forth. They can have continued to push this on the public while they themselves had a deep, dark underbelly of abuse with minors. And interestingly enough, the actress Elizabeth Gillis was 16 years old when she was on the show Victorious, and she met songwriter and composer Michael Corcoran. Interestingly enough, the 16-year-old, I'm sure just after she turned 18, started a relationship with the Mr. Corcoran, who ended up being over 20 years her senior, and then they ended up getting married sometime during 2020. And a lot of people pointed out that's a little weird that somebody would be in a relationship uh, with someone right after they turn 18, making it public that you were working on a show when she was 16 years old. A lot of people thought that was interesting. And there are other people that have come out and now they've become activists against so much of what has happened at Nickelodeon. Alexa Nicholas was a star on the show Zoe 101, and she appeared on That's Life, Hidden Hills, Revelations, and The Walking Dead. And she has also come out and become an activist against so much of what went on with her at Nickelodeon and with other stars. In fact, in July of 2023, Nicholas accused actor Jonah Hill of forcibly kissing her at a party at actor Justin Long's house in 2008. She was 16 and Hill was 24. In July of 2023, Nicholas accused Seth MacFarlane of making inappropriate comments to her, touching her inappropriately, and trying to kiss her without her consent while she was a voice actor on Family Guy. In September of 2023, Nicholas accused actor Joe Jonas of asking her for nude photos when they were teenagers. And she's a big part of this Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. And in a recent show regarding the fact that... Drake Bell had now come out and shown that he's going to be a part of this documentary. She actually talked a little bit about her feelings towards Nickelodeon and the fact that they did nothing to help her. They have pissed me off for so many years because, like I said on my protest sign, uh, when was this? In, in, In 2022, hopefully I'm getting this year right, you know, Nickelodeon didn't protect me. And they didn't. Nickelodeon didn't protect any of us at all. They had a responsibility and they failed at that responsibility miserably, damaging, lifelong trauma, horrific. 
And to be honest with you, that's Hollywood at large. And a number of kid actors have talked about this and talked about some of the traumatic events that have, they've really gone through. And there is an article on The Guardian uh, by a Corey Feldman or covering Corey Feldman where he says the biggest problem in Hollywood is taking advantage of children. And in a documentary that he's been working on and trying to get out supposedly for quite a long time, titled My Truth, The Blank of Two Corys. Feldman names actor Charlie Sheen, Marty Weiss, John Grissom, and Alfie Hoffman as abusers that sexually assaulted him and Corey Haim. Whether Feldman or Haim or really any of these actors, Drake Bell or whoever we're talking about, it just seems that there is an epidemic when it comes to going after these young kids and uh, this the the gross perversity. And we played a clip earlier talking a little bit about Brian Singer and X-Men, and we brought Pastor Joe on here to talk about it as well because, I mean, that video was made quite a while ago, Joe, and it's really interesting to me that this stuff is still going on, and just like with Peck, they put him right back up there with with Disney hiring him after he gets arrested for lewd acts with a child. And it's just like, what is going on? And yet here's Brian Singer, same thing. He, he does all these things and people come to his aid and bring him right back up because he's really good at making films. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of these guys have incredible talent because a lot of these guys are the demonic entities who are inventors of evil. Uh, and they're being used by them, as you know, Chad. Uh, and it's, it's crazy because... At least there's some kind of, I mean, we got ahead of Epstein before that all blew up. We got ahead of Singer too, because it, more and more things came out about Brian Singer. And uh, thankfully here, not USC, not far from us, uh, you know, the University of Southern California, 4,000 students at USC rose up and signed petitions to get Brian Singer's name off of the Brian Singer Division of Cinema and Media Studies. So Chad, uh, we kind of got up in front of that, just like we did the Epstein thing before that all blew up. We were exposing the singer thing sometime before this actually happened. And we believe, you know, God is speaking to our hearts in so many ways to warn people about uh, the, these, these evils that are taking place. And you've got Jeffrey Epstein, you know, and Child Abuse Island with the Clintons and all these other uh, politicians and stars, you know, musicians and entertainers and actors. There's no end to this. And we exposed, you had the same thing going on uh, with uh, P. Diddy, it appears, uh, with, with Usher and perhaps even Justin Bieber uh, grooming young guys. He's under Clive Davis, and uh, he was being influenced in, in very, very dark ways. If people should check out our, our video on that. Uh, it's, it's just reprehensible. But, Chad, it gets really crazy when you think of all the children that came forth with Michael Jackson, the biggest pops, the king of pop, you know? Uh, we could also talk about the king of rock and roll. And, I mean, Elvis Presley, you <laughs> yeah. know? And he had a girl at the age of 14, you know? Oh, they... He lived with her for all those years, but yeah, he never really did anything with her. Well, I don't know if I believe that. And then with regard to Michael Jackson, I mean, you had several young people come forth, young children. Uh, uh, some came out later and said they didn't want to admit it back then. You know, when you look at, for instance, uh, you know, Neverland, you know, uh, he used that as an attraction to kids to seduce them. It was it was almost a child abuser's dream to have such a, a, a seductive thing to draw kids in. And then, of course, his fame as being the king of pop. And when you look at all the children uh, that that allege that he had abused them and their stories and the detail they go into and how it's so similar to what others explain, it is so shocking. There was Jordan Chandler and his parents had filed a lawsuit against Jackson. And the, the lawsuit claimed that Jackson had committed sexual battery against him. There was also Gavin Arviso, who was just 13 years old at the time of the alleged abuse at the Neverland Ranch. And then HBO's documentary, Leaving Neverland, featuring men who claimed they were abused when they were children and spent years, some of them, with Jackson. There were testimonies by Wade Robson and James Safechuck, who accused Michael Jackson of abusing them. And it's interesting, Chad, because when you look at the accusations, I mean, one of these men was with him since he was, when he was seven years old, all the way to when he was 14 years old. And what's crazy is they have similar stories. They talk about how uh, he would go through drills in case somebody was coming when he was molesting them uh, in, in, in Jackson's home. And uh, there would be bells that would go off because somebody was walking down the hall. He had several locks on the door. 
he would go through drills on how to get dressed real quick and put your clothes on after having been naked so they could present themselves if somebody really needed to talk to Michael. A lot of people don't realize how deep this goes within Hollywood and how jacked up and how wicked it is. I mean, think of the reality that Harvey Weinstein, which, you know, the Me Too movement, you know, got going because of Harvey Weinstein, although they don't really focus a lot on the children that are being abused so much. But think of Harvey Weinstein. He hired ex Mossad agents to discredit actors, or I should say actresses and journalists who were writing about him. I mean, this is wicked. And what's sad is people get so seduced by the acting and, and the music and these directors that they just set these things aside, Chad, when this is actually incredibly wicked and it breaks God's heart. And if we're made in the image of God, which we are, but if we have any semblance of that image left in us, it should break our hearts. Absolutely. And, you know, it is sad that so many people, and we've had these long conversations. When I first came work, work to work at the ministry and was answering emails, the, the things and the gymnastics and hoops that people would jump through because they didn't want to believe that their favorite, you know, star, mm, yeah. singer, whatever, was doing these actions. It is so sad. And, and Michael Jackson is a perfect example of that. Yeah. I mean, they will do anything oh, look, he really hated Sony and really they were doing this to him and all of it was just a bunch of lies. And every time a celebrity dies, almost every time, and if we cover it or something, it's, oh, they were just about to expose, you know, trafficking victims and so forth and, and what not expose trafficking victims, but expose the people that were trafficking victims. And to believe such a narrative when there's not a scratch of evidence. Of oh it. yeah, they'll do it every every single time. And it is really sad. But the truth is when it comes to Hollywood, when it comes to, all the things that we're talking about, movies and music and media and all this stuff, it has an influence on people, which is why Satan would want to have his fingers in it. He's not looking at this and going, man, I really wish I would have thought of corrupting a bunch of youth so that they could corrupt a bunch of youth. I, there's no way he's sitting there thinking, man, that was such a good idea. That would have worked really, I could have done that. That would have worked really well. Absolutely not. And the truth is, is this whole lump needs to go. Uh, you know, sin is something that corrupts throughout. And that's what Paul talks about in the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, but it's a principle of truth. And I always think when I see these things, specifically when the Bible describes this, when James describes it in James chapter 1, verse, 13 and, uh, verse 14 and 15, it says this, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. And when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. And that's what we're seeing. That's what we've been seeing all Absolutely. these years. That's what we're seeing through everything that's going on. And sadly enough, whether, you know, Corey Haim, and, and you know, we, we talked about this before, you know, Corey Feldman said that Corey Haim was just passed around, you know, as a young child, you know, from, you know, one yeah. pervert to the next. On the set of Lucas. Yeah, amen. And this stuff is really, really heartbreaking. And I really think... It's interesting because the reverberations are now coming out in terms of a lot of these child stars that we're talking about right now, because this was, you know, the people my age and uh, Josh, who's editing this, like this was our ages, you know, the, yeah. the TV shows that your parents turned on. And sadly enough, they got, whether it's the show Victorious or other shows, they got more and more loose, the Degrassi. And then you obviously have Drake stardom coming from there and, and where he is today. And over and over, I mean, Degrassi was pushing some pretty gross stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, that show was corrupt and disgusting. And they're pushing all this stuff. Like, people think it's like, oh, it's no big deal. No, they are corrupting young kids, and this is what's going on. And yeah. of course, they're corrupt themselves. Yeah, and, and that's that's great point. Great points, because, and the million-dollar question is, where are all the parents? You know? How do these parents just give their children over to a man who has no children, he's childless, and let them stay with him and let them stay in his bed overnight. I mean, who in their right mind would do that and allow that? But you know what? There's seduction of fame. It's Michael Jackson. There's seduction of gifts. They get a lot of gifts from Michael Jackson. Uh, there's, I mean, look what happened with, remember, P. Diddy and Usher. You know, his mom was getting a, a check every week as long as he was living with uh, P. Diddy at the age of 14, 15, you know? Uh, so, but as parents, and especially Christian parents, Chad, we have to make sure uh, that we keep our head on a swivel because those aren't the only predators out there. They're all over the place and we need to make very be very careful. We should never be letting our children stay with a grown man, you know? Uh, and Peter says, be sober, be vigilant. First Peter 5, 8. 
For your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So as parents, we need to recognize that Satan and the demonic world are very real and they would love to destroy our children. So we need to have our heads on a swivel. We need to go the extra mile. And I'm not, I'm not talking about to the point where our kids can't breathe and we suffocate them, but to the point where you're not allowing them to be influenced by the wickedness of these perverts and also the wickedness of so much of the perversion that comes through their productions through Hollywood. I think it's so important. And also, this is a recognition, and, and uh, we'll finish up with this, Joe. I think more people need to understand the devastation of the adult entertainment industry. I hate to even call it that, but you guys know we have to be very careful with our words to allow our shows to go forth. But when you think about how many young people right now are absolutely corrupted, and so when you are handing your child over, even to a younger person, they have probably seen so many violent images yeah. of that nature that they are corrupted because of it, very different than any other generation we've ever been in. That's I mean, right. It is just a reality. And this is a time where, first of all, you need to be really careful and you've got to be really prayed up about getting your kid a smartphone at a young age. I'm just going to say that. Amen and amen. <laughs> and I would also say, rush roulette with be your soul. Mindful. Amen. Be mindful of those things. Recognize them. Call it out. And also know that there is forgiveness when those things have taken place and when those addictions and those kind of things corrupt the mind know that god can change our hearts change our Amen. minds and honestly make us new people in christ if you don't know christ time to turn to him now Amen. he died for your sins according to scriptures he rose again on the third day according to your scriptures and all who call on the name of yahweh the name of the lord shall be saved amen god bless guys Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's featured product is Wrestling With Discipleship. You can get it at wrestlingwithdiscipleship.com, goodfight.org, or amazon.com.